So this is a new e-ink display. This is uh, not a glass. This is plastic. So how does this work? Um, in principle, the display uh, works exactly like the glass-based display that we have today. Um, the e-ink material is pretty much um, the same. The black and white particles inside the microcapsules are the ones that uh, uh, create this image, and it's uh, based on the electrophoretic technology. However, what's different about this is we are not using a, a glass backplane like we currently use in our shipping devices. This is a plastic uh, backplane uh, substrate that allows us to build a flexible display. So this display can actually bend, but the intent is not to actually bend the display, but the intent is to um, create a product that is almost indestructible. So we want to build devices uh, for school students, for example, who are likely to drop it. And uh, I will show you a couple of experiments which will probably convey this better than my just um, describing it in words. First, um, let me pick up a um, you know ordinary pulp-based paper <laughs> medium, uh, this magazine, for example. I'm going to do two things with this magazine. The first is I'm going to drop it, just like you would drop it. Assume that I dropped it on the floor. And you can do the exact same thing with our um, display. And if I had dropped an LCD uh, at a great height, uh, it's going to shatter, whereas there's nothing to shatter in this. The other is um, um, just like on a piece of paper, you can, um, it's pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's been around for a long time. The same thing with our displays, it's very tough. And um, it's pretty much indestructible. Nice. How about scratch? Is there some scratch protection? Uh, we can put uh, uh, layers of material on it depending on the application to reduce or even prevent uh, scratching. Um, but again, we can potentially scratch a book or an LCD or anything. If yeah. you really want to scratch something, you could. Yeah. But because the, the idea may, might be that now a textbook based on e-ink can go in a, in a bag without a leather case, maybe. Right, right. Is that a possibility now? It, it is a possibility. You can build a device that is, uh, has a very, um, uh, it has a covering on top uh, or a, a material that's applied on top that is uh, scratch resistant and uh, suitable for um, tapping and um, writing and that sort of a, uh, application. Nice, because the idea is that uh, maybe children uh, are less careful with their e-ink <laughs> devices, yes. and this could really solve this, right? Yes. Now you, you want to put it in te textbooks. Sure. It's not just children. We ourselves, we can, um, uh, we can get pretty careless with our newspaper, for example, and we are much more careful with our electronic devices. With this, uh, you can uh, uh, use it in a much more uh, rugged environment. Um, these kinds of displays are intended for um, school textbooks, and uh, we expect um, the students will abuse them, and they should be able to withstand and not break easily. Nice. So this is a big, uh, you see it as a big trend, a, a big possible uh, market right here for e-ink is uh, to be a tool in schools. Yes, um, it, it, and it, it doesn't even have to be flexible displays. Flexible displays would be the ideal medium for that, but it could even be glass-based displays. But the whole aspect of uh, electronic textbooks is to put uh, uh, a library in every child's backpack, if you will, uh, the idea is to get um, content available in the remotest parts of the world where otherwise uh, there would be no way they would build a library. So um, what we're doing is getting all of the uh, right kind of um, um, content, uh, when I say we, uh, not e-ink itself, but the ecosystem, and uh, uh, building these devices so that uh, we can replace textbooks uh, and uh, uh, so one example that um, we feel uh, strongly about is um, ordinary paper consumes a lot of um, trees. And um, today we send our children um, to plant these trees. And it may take 20 years for these trees to mature and replace the one that we chopped down to make paper. However, we could change our reading behavior and in the next 20 minutes we could save 20 trees. And if you extend that, to countries where they're trying to increase their literacy percentage. There are lots of large countries um, uh, that uh, even if they want to increase their literacy percentage by 10%, it'll uh, fell a lot of their national forests. 
and that would not be acceptable um, um, to these um, various um, uh, countries and 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 therefore there is a tremendous interest in electronic medium uh, to consume uh, so it's green and it's good for the planet absolutely. as well how about the readability on uh, with a plastic screen is it just as good as the glass screen yeah in fact this particular display is our um, uh, previous generation um, display that's used in this particular demonstration. So the um, glass or plastic is not going to impact that a whole lot. It's going to be uh, based on whatever current generation product that we have. If we put our latest display on it, you will see the contrast even um, increasing compared to what you have here. And for it to reach millions and millions and millions of, of schools and, and children, uh, the cost needs to go down. What is the cost right now and, and how, how fast is it going down for the e ink screens? Uh, first of all, there are not a whole lot of dedicated textbook devices in the first place. Particularly in the third world countries, they're almost non-existent. And that's the first thing that needs to occur. Once that occurs uh, and there is education about the value of these devices and the promise of these devices, and that market will take off. And that's when a discussion about what's the right price would be more appropriate. However, it's not just the electronic device itself but um, content needs to be digitized and available. Uh, there should be easier access to content and variety of content for these devices to be successful. Nice. Uh, there was one a Apple fanboy in the, in the panel, and uh, there is uh, some blogs that, that think, that kind of write, that the iPad is killing the Kindle. That's what they say. But uh, do you see that happening, or do you see it more like it's promoting the whole concept of reading? And how do you compare e-ink with the, with the LCD tablets? Sure. Um, E-Ink's uh, parent company, which is recently renamed to E-Ink Holdings Incorporated, has been making LCDs since 1992. Um, we've been making LCDs a lot uh, earlier than um, uh, e-paper. So we know a lot about LCDs. We believe LCDs are not the right medium for or right display for uh, reading applications. However, um, our belief is that um, uh, there are um, dedicated uh, e-reader devices uh, that play a uh, significant role and uh, they will continue. We are seeing continued uh, interest in the market and growth in the market. There are new players um, signing on to make uh, e dedicated e-book devices. Just a couple of days ago, um, there was an announcement uh, between iRover and LG Display to create a company to build a, another a new uh, e-book device. Nice. And uh, the Kindle was just announced to be uh, $189, I think, and uh, the Nook is going down to 149 so the price is going down, and the price that goes down, more people will buy. Um, we've seen this trend uh, for the last few months. There were many of uh, uh, E-Ink's customers that uh, uh, reduced prices and uh, lowered the hardware cost. In some cases, some of our customers are subsidizing this with... Um, content. Uh, they would make money on the content and subsidize the hardware. In other cases, our customers have figured out a way to reduce the overall uh, uh, bomb costs, uh, the bill of material costs, um, by working with all the different suppliers. Sometimes there's over a hundred suppliers uh, of different components that uh, come together to make an e-book. And this whole ecosystem is maturing and therefore you're seeing all the benefits of uh, a growing market as well as uh, um, um, products that are designed for specific applications um, offering um, cost benefits. Nice. So, so um, the, the cost is, is, um, is going down and, and the, 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 I mean, the popularity. Is there any announcement officially by E-Ink in terms of how popular these devices are and is it going up? Um, we have made many announcements. Uh, we grew 250% last year in the middle of a recession. Uh, that shows you how popular these devices are. And we're also uh, experiencing a lot of interest in uh, not just the e-book market, but in some of the other markets. Uh, for example, I have an e-ink wristwatch. I'm going to, uh, let me see if I can uh, show you the wristwatch here. These kinds of applications where there are e-ink displays in non-publishing applications are also uh, taking off and doing well. And I'm going to show you another product which I'm 
you may have to give me a second to yeah. switch off. And, uh, this is an example of another e-ink uh, display-based um, device. This is a smart card. I'm going to press this button right here, and it will energize the e-ink display. So uh, it is a sunlight-readable display, extremely thin, as you can see. The credit card is the same thickness as a normal credit card, and the display has to be flexible because the credit card uh, will undergo some amount of uh, stress when it's in your wallet or purse. And um, it's very low power, so in a device um, on a smart card, it should last for a very long time with the embedded battery in it. And uh, uh, once again, the same example that I showed you with the plastic display um, for uh, publishing um, uh, markets, uh, in this case also, you should be able to drop it. I'm going to drop it. <laughs> and, yeah, it's fine. Uh, or, um, you know, if uh, yeah. it, by chance it comes, um, uh, it, there's an impact on the device, the, the display yeah. should not break. So it, it could, for example, say, display how much money you have or all uh, kinds of things? What no. Could it display? <laughs> what is it? it probably what could. What's the idea? <laughs> the intent is uh, uh, today when you do a, a large transaction, you flip the card over and read a three-digit uh, security yeah. number. And uh, in the future, those numbers uh, would probably be six digits, and they would change for each transaction. There will be uh, tens of thousands of numbers stored. So it's for security? Uh, so mainly for security, one-time passcode, and that sort of a thing. That's cool. That's awesome. So you just click to kind of authorize a payment or something like that, right? You could do many different things with once you have a display in, nice. in, in a smart card. Cool. Okay, so and also e-ink is possible to be used like your, like your watch in different shapes? Yes. yes. You can make round yes. screens? In fact, uh, I had uh, a, a wristwatch earlier, uh, which I'm happy to show you a uh, sample or send you a picture. That had a round display with a hole in the middle of the display. And that's something that you can do with most other display technologies. Uh, we've been promoting the concept of think outside the rectangle meaning um, that most designers, when they request the ink for a display specification, they're asking for a square or rectangular uh, display uh, rather than displays of different shapes uh, and sizes that you can, um, instead of adapting your device to the display, you can actually adapt your display to the device. This is possible. And you will see many more, uh, more creative, more aesthetically pleasing devices in the future. Nice, and you, you even plan to put screens on batteries and other things. That's right. We've already put uh, e-ink displays on um, uh, battery packs, and uh, we've also put uh, e-ink displays uh, in uh, memory sticks. Um, there's a whole host of applications in the memory and uh, uh, battery segment. They are like fuel gauges. They will show you uh, how much... Uh, power uh, is left in the battery or how much memory is left in nice. the uh, Because in theory, the, 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 the number doesn't need to get off, right? It can just stay on. It doesn't use any power at all, right? Correct, now. correct. In this particular case, for security purposes, this is actually a demo, so therefore yeah. it switches off. But there is no need. You can just leave that uh, forever. Leave it on. Now, this is a classic example of um, that uh, phenomenon. It's a bistable um, uh, feature in the display. This image was put on this display a couple of months ago, maybe three months ago, and it has retained that image. We actually have at the ink a display that was switched off in the year 2001, and it still retains the image. And we have it, we have it framed, it, it's on the wall in our office, and nice. it's definitely possible. Cool. And are you also speeding up the speed of turning pages and stuff and doing optimizations there? Yeah. So uh, we are here uh, today at the Freescale um, Technology Forum where we have partnered with uh, Freescale as well as other semiconductor companies to create system-on-chip solutions. What these uh, devices would uh, do is um, to improve the performance of our display, including a, um, a faster response or a faster page turn, for example, on our displays. So the IMX 508, or correct, yeah. correct. And so that will. How, it, is there a point where you push the button and basically it switches nearly instantly, or? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Um, however, what is fascinating is our currently shipping devices actually take less time to turn a page than you would in an ordinary book, and the reason that you think this is taking longer is because with the ordinary book. Uh, when you turn a page, your eyes are actually watching that page turn and watch your finger move, and uh, you're occupied, whereas um, 
the, any display technology, when you press a button, then you're just waiting for something to happen. And yeah. that is why you notice that difference. Yeah. While you're waiting, you couldn't like display some kind of animation and uh, something else, no? To distract, or make people think they're not waiting? No, it's impossible. Uh, it is possible. There are some of our customers that actually uh, mimic a page turn on the display. Yeah. And that is one way to do it. But uh, essentially, uh, there is a lot of activity within e-ink to be improve the basic response of the display. And that's an ongoing activity. In the last 10 years, uh, pretty much every 18 months, we have um, uh, doubled the performance of our product. And we've uh, stayed on that course for the last 10 years. And we hope uh, we have um, many more innovations like that to come. Nice. And the 6-inch or 5-inch EE readers, they'll be $99 for sure soon? <laughs> it is not our choice as yeah. to what those prices are going to be. The markets will uh, decide and our specific customers would uh, have their own strategies, how they want to uh, price and market them. Uh, but the cost of these devices are not display dependent. There are multiple subcomponents, plus there are also business models involving uh, the carriers, yeah. involving um, the content, involving um, contracts and those kinds of things. Right. There are a variety of variables in, in the mix to decide the uh, price of the hardware device itself. Just like if you look at a smartphone, try to buy a smartphone without a contract, you're probably going to end up paying $500. Yeah. Relatively speaking, many of the e-books devices, pretty much all of the e-book devices are half of that price with no contract. And I think um, uh, that's just a wonderful thing uh, in, a, a, in a market that just emerged in the last two or three years that we've been able to achieve such uh, price points. But the, the screen is definitely the most expensive component, right? And, and it, the price is definitely going down, no? The prices on the displays have been going down every year. Um, typically, we would see a price decline of about 10 to 15 percent as normal in our industry. And, um, but what is um, causing a, um, a certain price point is not just the display alone. Uh, what we've been doing is we've been partnering with the rest of the ecosystem, whether they are folks that make the uh, digitizers and touch screens, whether they are folks that make the semiconductor devices and uh, uh, the uh, backplane substrate, so on and so forth. With all of these collaborations, we are able to achieve an overall ebook. Um, cost down for our customers. Cool. Okay. Looking forward to all these nice nice uh, plastic and cheaper and all that. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much.